Um, so the latest little update on the Enfield. Um, I've still been working through trying to figure out if the bikes basically sound um, or not before I go and spend a shed load of money um, on doing it up. I really want to ascertain whether it's a, a bit of a pig or not. So since the last um, little posting, what we've done here is had a really good sort out of the timing, um, the ignition timing. It was <clears throat> not running right at all. Um, and what we ended up doing was to set the ignition, um, because it's got electronic ignition has been fitted to it. Um, you had to be able to measure top dead centre accurately and um, 0.8 of a millimetre after top dead centre. Obviously that's a bit tricky when all you're kind of going on is compression and sticking a screwdriver down the um, screwdriver hole to see when it's at the top. So I went and bought a dial gauge, it's really impressive. Um, very, very pleased with it, um, which you plonk into the spark plug hole and really accurately measures for you. So <clears throat> we've had a go at the timing. It's much, much, much better now. Uh, still needs a little bit of work. Kicks back at me quite ferociously when I go to start it. Um, so Needs to do a little bit more on the timing, um, but basically I'm happy that it's all achievable. There's nothing really a problem there. New spark plug has gone in. Um, when we were looking at the timing, we took off the exhaust pipe, resealed that, took off the primary chain cover um, so that we could do more sensitive adjustments. Notice the primary chain was really very, very loose, so we've tightened that up. That should save a lot of engine noise. Last thing we've been currently looking at is front forks. Um, they were leaking a lot of oil, and so I've uh, taken them back, put new seals in, started cleaning them up. <coughs> but you need a special tool um, for when you're putting the, the bottom of the forks back on. When the seals come over this, it can easily damage them. Um, so you meant to buy a little clamp tool that can help you do that. Um, I didn't bother. I'm just trying to manufacture things out of bits of children's plastic cups and things. Didn't work. So I'm going to fork out and buy, buy the, the special tool for that. Um, other thing we've done, clutch. Previously, um, you needed to be Rambo to be able to pull the clutch in and it didn't really declutch, didn't activate. I had a horrible feeling there was something really pretty major um, wrong with the clutch internally. But looked on the fabulous Hitchcock's um, website and <clears throat> they said on their website it just probably needs adjusting. Done that. Um, there's a couple of little adjustment holes, like little windows that you can get into. Around here, there's one, and there's the other, <coughs> and you simply adjust it as it says in the book, do as it says on the tin, and um, it is absolutely marvellous. So yeah, that's about where we are now. I'm pretty certain it, everything on the bike is resolvable. I'm kind of thinking now, I have been thinking, but because this is a horrible green colour, uh, just to paint it black. But I think actually it would be nice to try to polish it up and get this back down to polished aluminium. Um, yeah. Taking all this off looks like a major job. So I shall wait until I'm in more of a position to uh, start pulling that apart. So I think my next things I'll be doing will be starting to have a look at shifting the battery, getting a small uh, lithium battery and 
hiding away all the gubbins. So I'm, I'll get a new saddle. Um, I'll see how much room there is to hide stuff under there and then contemplate making some sort of box to hide the battery if I can't fit it up above. Yeah, so it's looking good. Going sweet. Apart from she's kicking back on me, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.